أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم My dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Isn't it amazing that we are here but uh, a fortunate blessed bunch of people are in Mecca in Mina and uh, well, on Mujdalifa Allah, they will be having an amazing time and we will inshallah be remembering them in our dua more importantly they should be remembering us in their dua because we need it of course and they're in the blessed place every time I think about this what reverberates in my mind in my head my brothers and sisters is uh, the talbiyah of the hujjaj something that you cannot get it out of your head you cannot get talbiyah out of your head labbaik allahumma labbaik labbaik la sharika lak labbaik inna alhamda wa ni'mata lak wal mulku la sharika lak beautiful wherever you go wherever you are in mecca in the surrounding people from all over the world flying walking taking the trains buses driving or uh, boat ships they all say the same subhanallah saying oh allah here i am here i am here i am there are no partners to you you have no partner whatsoever here i am verily all praise and thanks and favors and authorities belong to you no partner have you and we keep on repeating this labbaik allahumma labbaik labbaik la sharika lak labbaik inna alhamda wa ni'mata lak wal mulku la sharika lak i love the talbiyah one of my favorite things to do when i am in mecca especially for hajj brothers and sisters it's not just the talbiyah that we should be remembering we should remember hajj and the significance of hajj and what we should be doing now i know you'll have heard many lectures about the importance of the first 10 days of the hijjah i'm not going to do another talk on that today many many talks are available on online many people are writing articles what i want to talk about today is a reminder of our beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's last speech people call it the farewell speech i don't like it to be called the farewell speech i like to call it the last speech that he gave this speech was delivered on the 9th of dhul hijjah on year 10 after hijra in the valley of arafat in mecca prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam began his speech firstly by saying thanking allah and praising Allah Azza wa Jal, thanking him for all the favors. And then he said, and I'll read the speech to you and explain as I move forward. He said, O oh people, lend me an attentive ear. For I know not whether after this year I shall ever be amongst you again. Therefore, listen to what I am going to say to you very carefully. And take these words to those who could not be present here today. Brothers and sisters, just imagine how the companions must have felt when they heard these words. And how our beloved Prophet of Allah وسلم, must have felt making that address to his companions. It wasn't long ago, it wasn't long ago, 23 years or so only ago, when he began his mission, running away from the mountains, when he had encountered Jibreel, frightened, shaken, coming home saying to his wife cover me cover me cover me not knowing what's happened to him and his wife gave him consolation saying oh muhammad don't worry allah will not betray you allah will not let you down allah will not forsake you allah will not allow anything bad to happen to you for you are a good man you're a truthful man honest man caring man you're a compassionate man you're a generous man you will not be let down can you imagine prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he began his mission on his own the first of those who embraced his mission was khadija radiallahu anha his wife imagine that moment when he began his mission when nobody believed him and yet 23 years later he is in arafat in doing his only hajj in his life one and only hajj addressing according to historians more than 100,000 people imagine that started with himself with his wife as the first of those who embraced islam 
to hundred thousand plus people in Arafat gathered from all over Arabia who have come to listen to the sayings and the statements and the teachings of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Some of those people would have been there with the Prophet before. Some of them would have been his closest companions. Some of them would have seen him for the first time in their lives because they would have traveled from far afield just to hear and see this man, the man who turned the history of the world, the man who turned the destiny of humanity, the man who brought the message of Allah, the man who was chosen to be the prophet of Allah, the last of the messengers. They wanted to see this man. So he looks around perhaps, just imagine him seeing the congregation. He must have remembered Surah Nasr. إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتِّحِ وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ فَوَجَا فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَابًا Allah is saying to Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم Oh Muhammad, when you see Allah's victory coming when you see Allah's victory coming and you see large numbers of people gathering into Islam فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ Praise Allah, thank Him and do istighfar بحمد ربك واستغفره and ask Allah for forgiveness for shortcomings and failures and so that Allah will keep your hearts away from arrogance so that you don't think this is your achievement so he began by thanking Allah for what he has given the ni'mah the hundred thousand plus people who have gathered from all over Arabia and he said to them all of them please pay very careful attention to every word I'm about to utter to you. For I shall not be here today. I shall not be here tomorrow. I have no guarantee that I shall be here with you in the next Hajj or next time. This could be my last word. And I can tell you Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali and all the other prominent companions must have weeped like a baby because they knew when Prophet Sallallahu says such a thing, he is announcing his farewell. Though there is no narration to say they were crying. But I just could imagine the longing of those people's hearts. For they loved Allah's Prophet Muhammad وسلم, more than they loved themselves. So the first lesson we learn from our beloved Prophet's words is take these words to those who could not be present here today. First lesson our Prophet وسلم, leaves for all of us. And that is, it is an obligation for all of us to share Islam and its message with everybody not just your family and your friends but everybody the message of Islam must be heard by people in the right way not in the wrong way <laughs> invite people to the path of Allah with wisdom and good examples with wisdom with wisdom but the obligation to pass on the message has been given and trusted upon those hundred thousand who came and to the millions and the billions who have followed him since so in the last of the speeches the first and the foremost message that we learn and the lesson that we take with us my brothers and sisters is that we are obliged to share this message of Islam with other people that nobody have a shadow of a doubt the importance of sharing Islam with people with wisdom and good examples. He then says, so that was lesson number one. Lesson number one. He then says, oh people, just as you regard this month, this day, this very city as sacred, so regard the life and the property of every Muslim as sacred trust. Return the goods entrusted to you to the rightful owners hurt no one so that no one may hurt you remember that Allah will indeed remember that you will indeed meet your Lord and that he will indeed reckon your deeds Allah has forbidden you from taking usury therefore all interest or usury obligations shall henceforth be waived from one over the other your capitals however is yours to keep You'll neither inflict nor suffer any iniquity. Allah has judged that there shall be no interest and that all the interest due to Abbas ibn al-Abdul Muttalib, Prophet's uncle, shall henceforth be waived. My brothers and sisters, very important second lesson he gives to all of us. It's called sanctity of people's lives and property. 
from that day onwards and from before all life is sacred no one shall take a life no one shall kill no one shall promote killing no one shall spill blood no one shall harm anybody no one shall hurt other people either not just kill or harm but you're not even allowed to hurt people prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said what an amazing what an amazing blueprint for social cohesion for society to live in peace and security for those muslims who have misunderstood or are totally ignorant about the punishment for those murders and mayhems that they cause in many parts of the world in the name of islam let me remind them prophet sallallahu alaihi said every life is sacred every life is sacred allah says that in the quran you take one life man qatala nafsin bi ghayri nafsin aw fasadin fil ard fa ka'annama qatala an-nas jami'a you take one life it is like you've taken the lives of the entire humanity and whoever saves one life, it is like they have saved the lives of the entire humanity. Brothers and sisters, Prophet ﷺ made his last speech to 100,000 companions, and there he made life sacred. No one shall take it. There he made the honor of each other sacred, so you shall not harm anyone, nor shall you hurt them. He made our properties and our goods sacred, so you shall not take them away. You shall not impose yourself over people. You shall not use our people's wealth or land on property. You shall not, you shall not use our land or property of other people. You're allowed to buy, but you shall not steal people's property. You shall regard people's property as sacred. And at the back of this very sacred principle, he nullified, he cancelled all the interest that was being held by anybody in that community, in Mecca, in Medina, and anyone who lived under the rule of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. From today, he said, all interest-bearing transactions are null and void. You can keep your capital, but you shall not get a single money or a penny back in return when it comes to interest. My brothers and sisters, it is a profound statement. It is because of the interest-bearing economy today, we have the misery in the world, the inequality in the world, the poverty in the world, the rich, less than 1% of the world's population, enjoy 70% of the world's wealth. Rest of us only get the scraps that they throw. Majority of them make money from the interest that we pay so that they could make more and more on the money that they already have. Interest is haram in Islam. We find ourselves in a very difficult situation where everything is interest bearing. Everything. But we as Muslims should not actively promote or pursue interest bearing returns. You shall not give interest, you shall not take interest. Scholars have made exceptions under darura. But promoting interest is haram under all circumstances. Remember that. Then he says, Beware of shaitan. For safety of your religion, he has lost all. Beware of shaitan for the safety of your religion. He has lost all hope that he will ever be able to lead you astray in big things. So be aware of following him in small things. Shaitan has given up hope on the true believers that shaitan will ever be able to take them away from the right path in big things true believers will not sacrifice their big things but they will sacrifice small things so shaitan will invest all his time in inspiring you to do small things small things small things small things you add them up they become bigger and bigger and bigger on the scale on the day of judgment and many will arise on the day of judgment having done everything good in the bigger and a major way but don't stuck on the day of judgment and they will be saying, Ya Allah, what's going on? And the rewards and all the good things that we have done, but their scale is tipped the other way because of the small things that they were compromising on. Shaitan has given up on wasting its time in making you leave your prayers. Making you leave your Ramadan. In the month of Ramadan, the masajids are full. Shaitan is frustrated. In Hajj, today there are more than 5 million people in Hajj doing Hajj. Every year, Shaitan has given up on persuading people from leaving Hajj. But Shaitan has persuaded people to do other things. 
Second lesson we learn, life and property are sacred. Everything will be thrown at you. Shaitan will do everything possible by inspiring you to do small things so that you may sacrifice people's lives, their honor and their property. Never do it. My brothers and sisters, those are the two lessons that I've drawn from the last speech I gave. Inshallah, I'll talk about three more in a few minutes. May Allah give us the strength to be able to practice all that we have heard. May Allah forgive us our mistakes and strengthen us in our iman.